The Endless Trials of Narcissists, Why They Will Never Stop Testing You Hello, dear viewers, and a warm welcome to all who have tuned into our channel today. If you are a newcomer to our content, we're thrilled to have you here. Please consider hitting that like button if you find the content of this video valuable, and don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with our latest releases. Leaving a comment also helps us understand your thoughts and feedback, and it signals to YouTube that our content is worth recommending to others. However, it is important to note that the material presented here is intended solely for educational purposes. If you ever find yourself in a crisis or in need of support, we strongly urge you to seek professional help. The central theme of our discussion today is Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, a recognized psychological disorder. It's critical to understand that NPD is not a condition that individuals willingly choose. In fact, scientific studies have revealed evidence of abnormalities in certain areas of the brain that are responsible for critical functions such as empathy, emotional regulation, impulse control, and higher executive functions such as planning and judgment. That being said, it is necessary to acknowledge that being in a relationship with a narcissist can be, and often is, extremely damaging. It's not something you are obligated to endure, and there may be times when protecting your own well-being becomes paramount. If you, for whatever reason, feel compelled to maintain a relationship with a narcissist, please remember that I am not in your shoes and therefore, in no position to pass judgment. However, it would be crucial for you to manage and adjust your expectations accordingly. So, if you happen to have a pathological narcissist in your life, as opposed to someone who merely exhibits narcissistic tendencies or displays narcissistic behavior occasionally, then this video contains important insights for you. I urge you to listen carefully as I aim to equip you with the knowledge necessary to safeguard your well-being in the face of narcissistic abuse. Your protection and self-preservation are of utmost importance and this video will help you understand how to achieve that. I would like to clarify from the outset that I am not suggesting that you abandon the idea of setting and maintaining boundaries with a narcissist. Far from it. It is indeed a step that you may consider taking. The act of setting boundaries can provide you with a semblance of control and stability amidst the chaos that is often associated with narcissistic interactions. However, it is crucial that you understand the nature of the task you are undertaking. Setting boundaries with a narcissist is no easy feat, it requires an enormous amount of energy and consistency. It is an endeavor that demands your patience and perseverance, for the narcissist is bound to test your resolve over and over again. You might experience a level of success in maintaining your boundaries, but I urge you to manage your expectations realistically. Why? Because the narcissist is likely to perceive your boundaries not as a sign of your need for respect and space, but as a challenge to be overcome. In many instances, they may not even acknowledge your boundaries, let alone respect them. The reason for this can be traced back to the narcissist's core perspective. For them, it isn't about what you want or need. Their preoccupation is primarily with their own desires and needs. This is a difficult pill to swallow, but it is a fundamental aspect of understanding the narcissist's mindset. Therefore, the wise strategy when dealing with a narcissist might not be to focus exclusively on setting boundaries with them. Rather, it is important to turn the lens inward and set boundaries with yourself. Define what you are willing to tolerate. Decide how you will respond in order to protect yourself, your mental, emotional, and energetic well-being from the narcissist's dysfunctional behavior that they are seemingly unable to control. This is a vitally important aspect to remember. Without this understanding, you may find yourself taking their actions personally. You may blame yourself for their behavior. This could lead you to a repetitive cycle of futile attempts at communication and understanding, akin to banging your head against a brick wall. The result? Slowly but surely, you may find yourself spiraling towards a state of emotional exhaustion, or worse, insanity. The first step towards safeguarding yourself from a narcissist is to establish a sense of realistic expectations. If there is a narcissist in your life, chances are, you've had enough interactions with them to predict, with a fair level of accuracy, how they will behave in different scenarios. This predictive ability is your shield, your armor against the onslaught of narcissistic behavior. 
In this context, it's important to turn your focus inward and set boundaries within yourself. The question you should be asking yourself is, what am I willing to tolerate? This is a question that only you can answer. It's an internal boundary that you set for yourself, a line that you refuse to cross. Once you have defined this for yourself, the next step is to decide on the best course of action to protect yourself in scenarios that you know are bound to arise with the narcissist. Knowing what you are willing to tolerate is a powerful tool. It allows you to take the necessary steps to guard yourself in situations where the narcissist attempts to violate your boundaries. This could be as simple as walking away from a conversation, or as complex as taking legal action. Regardless of what your specific boundaries are, the key here is to respect them yourself, even if the narcissist refuses to do so. The next crucial realization to embrace is that you are not to blame for the narcissist's behavior. This can be a difficult pill to swallow, particularly if the narcissist has managed to convince you otherwise. You did not get entangled in the narcissist's web because of a lack of intelligence or goodness on your part. Not at all. The narcissist tries their manipulation tactics on everyone they meet. So, the question you should be asking is not why me, but rather why am I still here? Remember, you are not alone in this. Many others have found themselves in similar situations, and the aim here is not to judge, but to understand. You may have valid reasons for still being in the narcissist's life. If that's the case, what you need to do next is consider your options on how to best respond to protect yourself. This is a decision that requires careful thought and deliberation. At the heart of this decision-making process lies the fight-flight-or-freeze response. This is a primal reaction to threat that all humans have. When faced with a narcissist, you may have tried to fight. If you have, you'll know that it's a futile endeavor. It's akin to encountering a grizzly bear in the forest. There is nothing you can say or do that will deter the inevitable attack. You'll find yourself wasting your words, your energy. There is no point in trying to rationalize with a narcissist. This is a hard truth to accept, but an important one. Narcissists do not speak the same language as you. They do not possess the ability to rationalize in the way that you do. They cannot empathize with your feelings or your experiences. So, let me repeat this for emphasis. They can't hear you. They can't rationalize. They can't empathize. Save your breath. Save your energy. You're going to need it for the journey ahead. The second point that I'd like to discuss is of utmost importance. If you have the opportunity to remove yourself from this situation, do so promptly. Consider the metaphor of the hungry grizzly bear. If you were to find yourself face to face with this formidable creature in the wild, your best course of action would be to make a hasty retreat. It's not a time for contemplation or second guessing, it's a time for swift, decisive action. The same logic applies when dealing with a narcissist. If you can create some distance, physically or emotionally, seize the opportunity without hesitation. Don't dawdle or deliberate. Just get in your vehicle and drive off. The act of distancing yourself can be quite literal such as moving to a different location, or it can be metaphorical, like creating emotional distance. The key here is to act swiftly and without delay. The longer you wait, the more opportunity the narcissist has to reel you back in with their manipulative tactics. Once you've managed to escape, it's crucial to seek the company of someone who can provide you a reality check. This person can remind you that the narcissist's behavior is not a reflection of who you are or what you've done. The narcissist's actions are not personal. They are simply a manifestation of their own deeply ingrained personality disorder. Returning to the grizzly bear analogy, it's important to understand that when a grizzly bear encounters a human in the woods and attacks, it's not because the human has done something wrong. The bear doesn't see a human with thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It only sees a source of sustenance, meat. The bear's actions are driven purely by its primal need to eat. Similarly, when a narcissist manipulates, belittles, or emotionally abuses you, it's not because you've done something to deserve it. You're merely the object of their manipulation because they have an insatiable need for control and validation. Should you manage to break free of a relationship with a narcissist, it's imperative that you resist the urge to return. The narcissist will likely attempt to lure you back in with promises of change and second chances. 
They might put on an impressive performance, designed to convince you that giving them another opportunity is worth the risk. However, you must be steadfast in your resolve. Narcissists are master manipulators. They will say and do anything to regain your attention. They might appear to have changed, to have seen the error of their ways. But this is merely a facade, a strategic play, to regain control. It won't take long before their old habits resurface. The masks will fall away, revealing the same narcissistic patterns of behavior that caused you so much pain in the first place. The third strategy, when neither confrontation nor escape are viable options in the fight-flight-freeze response, is to freeze. In the face of insurmountable adversity, such as a narcissist's relentless manipulation, you might find yourself resorting to this instinctive reaction. The term freeze in this context is quite literal. When the freeze response is triggered, your body and mind effectively halt in their tracks, akin to a deer caught in the headlights of an oncoming vehicle. This natural defense mechanism is not just a figure of speech. It has its roots in our biology, and it serves a vital function in our survival. Your brain, the master conductor of your body's symphony, begins to produce endorphins. These are potent chemicals that act as natural painkillers. They're your body's way of softening the blow of a traumatic event, cushioning you from the full brunt of the pain. Think of the endorphins as a protective shield, a buffer between you and the harsh reality of your situation. When you're stuck in a predicament that you can't escape from, these endorphins freeze you, not in a physical sense, but in a mental and emotional one. This is your brain's way of saying, I've got you. I'll take over from here. It's a survival strategy, a protective measure designed to help you withstand the unendurable. But what exactly does it mean to be frozen, to be numbed from the pain? It's not a state of complete insensibility or apathy. Rather, it's more like being encased in a cocoon of detachment. You're still here, still present, but there's a certain distance, a disconnection, between you and the pain. It's as if you're watching a movie of your life, observing the events unfold from a safe distance. In this disassociated state, you're less likely to react impulsively or emotionally. You can observe the narcissist's actions and words without being swept up in their emotional current. You can witness their manipulations and deceptions without being pulled under. You're not immune to the pain, but you're better equipped to withstand it. However, it's important to understand that the freeze response is not a permanent solution. It's a temporary measure, a stopgap to tide you over until you can find a way out of the situation. It's akin to a lifeboat that keeps you afloat in a stormy sea. The lifeboat won't get you to dry land, but it'll keep you from drowning until help arrives or the storm passes. Should you find yourself resorting to the freeze response, it's crucial to remember that it's not a sign of weakness or failure. It's a testament to your strength and resilience. It's your body and mind's way of saying, we're in this together. We'll get through this. But, like the lifeboat in a storm, the freeze response is not a destination. It's a means to an end, a temporary refuge until you can find your way to safety. In the face of a narcissist's relentless manipulation, the freeze response can be a powerful tool. It can provide a much-needed respite, a sanctuary within yourself. But remember, it's not a permanent solution. It's a survival strategy, a temporary measure, to help you weather the storm. And when the storm passes, when you're safe and secure, you can begin the process of healing and recovery. If you find yourself entrenched in such a relationship for reasons that are valid and important to you, then it's imperative to arm yourself with the right tools for survival. The fourth strategy for protecting yourself is very important. It is seeking support. The importance of this strategy cannot be overstressed. When you're constantly in the line of fire, trying to dodge the narcissist's manipulative tactics, it can be easy to lose sight of your own needs and emotions. Your sense of self can start to wane, slowly chipped away by the relentless onslaught of the narcissist's demands and criticisms. In times like these, having a pillar of support to lean on can make a world of difference. Support can come in many forms. It could be a trusted friend or family member who provides a listening ear, a shoulder to lean on, and words of encouragement when you need them the most. It could be a professional counselor or therapist who can offer guidance, insights, and coping strategies tailored to your unique situation. 
or it could be a support group of individuals who are going through similar experiences, where you can find solace in shared experiences and collective wisdom. Reaching out for support is not a sign of weakness. On the contrary, it's a testament to your strength and resilience. It's an acknowledgement that while you may not have control over the narcissist's actions, you do have control over your own well-being. This is your lifeline, your beacon of hope amid the storm. It's your way of saying, I matter. I deserve better. Seeking support also helps in maintaining perspective. When you're in the throes of a challenging relationship with a narcissist, it can be easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. You might start to internalize the narcissist's criticisms and manipulations, leading you to blame yourself for the problems in the relationship. But remember, you are not the problem. The narcissist's behavior is a reflection of their own insecurities and shortcomings, not yours. The faster you understand that you can't change a narcissist, the faster you can start to reclaim your life. A narcissist is unlikely to change their behavior, no matter how much you try to reason with them or accommodate their demands. This is a hard truth to accept, but it's a necessary step towards self-preservation. It's about recognizing that you can't save the narcissist, but you can save yourself. Saving yourself starts with taking action. It starts with reaching out for support, with building a safety net of people and resources that can help you navigate the challenging terrain of a relationship with a narcissist. It starts with acknowledging your worth and prioritizing your well-being. Remember, you don't have to face this journey alone. There are people who care about you, who want to help you, and who believe in your strength and resilience. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the challenges posed by narcissists and the strategies to protect oneself. If you found this discussion valuable, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more insightful content. Your comments are crucial in shaping our future discussions and helping others facing similar situations. Stay strong, prioritize yourself, and reach out for the support you deserve. Thank you for being a part of our community, and we wish you strength and resilience in your personal journey.